Hey y'all, Coach Nefi here, talking about the Revelation 12 sign in the sky. And in today's video, I'm going to show you by way of scripture what that sign actually all meant. Now, we're over here in the book of Revelation in chapter 12, and we're looking at verse 1. It says, And there appeared a great woman in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Now, Part of this sign appears every year around the Feast of Rosh Hashanah. This is how a lot of people understand the true date of Rosh Hashanah, even when the Jewish Hillel 2 calendar, that calendar that predicts the dates of the feast days that you'll see on your wall calendar or when you click into Google, those dates are chosen by a calculation created by a gentleman named Halal II back there with Constantine and adopted into the Jewish religion when it was created about 600 years later. What makes the year 2007 so unique is these wandering stars that we hear about here where it says upon her head a crown of 12 stars. So you'll see this woman in the cloud every year, but you may be a long time before you ever see this crown above her head like we saw in 2017. But the question is, what does this all mean? And for the answer, we have to come to the third testament of the Bible. Now, I'll give you a link to this book down in the description. You can find an audio book, PDF to download, even MP3s that you can download from the description on the third testament of the Bible. And the answer to the riddle of the Revelation 12 sign in the sky is found here in chapter 20, which is the chapter about Mary the maternal love of God and we've done several classes on this chapter understanding who Mary is in relationship to the big picture sure we understand that she was the mother of the Messiah but where did she go after she died we know that Enoch was changed in the Metatron we know that Aaron was changed into the covenant angel we know that other figures in the Bible who played prominent roles after their death were transformed into these angelic figures that help humanity well this chapter tells us what happened to Mary where did she go where is her rightful position now and how does she help us and even though this chapter is going to give some hints as to that I want to avoid the subject of Mary because not only have we covered it in many classes but because of the complexity and people's feelings toward Mary and even a female entity playing roles in this part, I'm going to leave you guys to this chapter so you can guys can go in and read all about Mary. What I want to concentrate on is the Revelation 12 sign in the sky. So excuse me as I kind of jump through a few hoops here to do so. Let's get started. First of all, the first verse we'll look at is 53. It says, My disciple John, prophet and seer, beheld in his ecstasy a woman dressed in the sun a radiant virgin of light so it's clear with this verse that the revelation 12 sign in the sky is what he's talking about you have this woman in the heavens clothed with the sun and it's easy to make the connection when it says that john who wrote the book of revelation saw this woman dressed in the sun a radiant virgin of light and of course he's talking about the constellation virgo which derives from the word virgin. So it's definitely talking about the same thing here. Now, over here in Revelation 12 and verse 2, it says, And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And when we come back to the third testament, verse 54 says, That woman, that virgin, is Mary, whose womb will once again conceive, not a new redeemer, but a world of men who sustain themselves by her love faith, humility, in order to follow the divine footsteps of Christ, the master of all perfection. So, like I said, I'm going to leave this all for you to get understanding by reading this chapter, or I'll give you links to the videos about Mary. What we're understanding here is that the representation that we saw in the sky in 2012 was of this woman who was the representation of Mary giving birth, but not to the Messiah like he did in the old times. That's what it says, not a new redeemer. That's not who was born in 2017. He who was born in 2017 is a world of men who sustain themselves by her love, faith, and humility. Now, I'm trying to dodge this as much as I can, 
But just to give you a little bit of a hint, Mary is one of the key protectors in our end times. You heard of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost? Well, after Mary's material flame was extinguished, we learn that she actually took on one of these roles. And in these times, it's important for us to understand that role that she plays, especially when these tribulous times start to take effect because one of her key roles is actually controlling the elements. So when we find ourselves face to face with these elements that threaten to annihilate all of humanity, it will be Mary who will actually come to our rescue. But like I said, I wanted to avoid all of that stuff because I know it's going to cause problems and some people are going to get distracted from the message. So let's put it down in the description of this video. We can talk all about Mary down there. Right now, we want to talk about this Revelation 12 sign in the sky. And what it's telling us here is that when we saw that sign, it was the signal of this new world of men being born. In other words, these people who we will know later on as the disciples who will go on to inherit the earth. They, they will be part of the 144,000 and or that multitude that no man can number. Well, that nation those people, the multitude and the 144,000 were actually born in spirit. Of course, they were born in 2017. This was the signal that we were given that these changes were actually taking place. And you can see these changes all over the world as people start to pay attention to divine things and particularly feast days. But anyway, Back over here at Revelation, it says, And she, being with child, cried, travailing with birth and pain to be delivered. Well, you look at verse 55 in the Third Testament. It says, The prophet saw how that woman suffered as though to give birth. And the pain was that of the purification of men and the expiation of the spirits. So here is talking about the birth pains that we hear about in the scripture related to the end times, but these pains, these birth pains are associated with delivering this new type of person. This person, like we said, that's going to go on to inherit the earth. It says, when the pain has passed, the light will be made in man and gladness shall fill the spirit of the universal mother. Now, this here, I believe, is referring to this time that we're given over here in the book of Revelation, particularly down here in about verse 6, when it's talking about these people being in the wilderness for 1,203 score days. So one could conceive out of this that in September of 2017, these new people were born and they were transferred into the wilderness where they spend these 1,203 score days being purified. We did a class yesterday that talked about the vibrating echo of the trumpet, the same trumpet we hear about in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and 1 Corinthians chapter 15. That sound of the trumpet will be vibrating from within our conscious and it appears as though those vibrations started getting louder in 2017 with the purpose of driving us back towards obedience to the covenant. But anyway, let's come back over here to Revelation chapter 12 and let's look at verse 3. It says, And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns above his head. Now, if you've got a clear understanding on what the woman and who she was and what she represents, you can almost imagine what this dragon represents. Well, that's not necessary because we could come back to the Third Testament, look in chapter 63, all the way down at verse 298, which says, Behold, that your most powerful enemy you carry is within yourselves. When you shall have conquered it, you will behold under your feet the dragon with seven heads of which the apostle John spoke. So here is what the dragon is. So you have this woman who's given birth to this new nation. I believe that's what the old time scripture would say. Um, can a nation be born in a day? Well, this nation was born on a day, September the 23rd in 2017. But immediately after this child was born, 
we see it over here in verse 4. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, to devour her child as soon as it was born. So understanding her role and the role of this nation, then we can see who this dragon is. This dragon is trying to destroy these people. This new people who are now inclined to keep in the law and the feast days and the covenant, doing things according to the scripture, getting away from the old Babylonian ways and the false church doctrines and all of that and getting back to the truth. You have this dragon standing before this woman waiting for her to deliver this child. Also, he can destroy it. But wait, this verse is actually talking about conquering this dragon. Notice how it says that we are to conquer the dragon. It says, behold, that your most powerful enemy you carry is within yourself. So what this is saying is once we recognize that our most powerful enemy is within us, then we could go on to conquer this enemy and we'll put this dragon under our feet. But who is this dragon? Well, we could come back up to chapter 57, reversion and renewal in all human areas. And we could hear about this dragon down here in verse 35. It says, you should expect the struggle to be great for all of you shall need to fight against the dragon of evil, whose weapons are ambition, hatred, earthly power, lust, vanity, selfishness, lies, idolatry, and fanaticism all being the forces of evil born of the human heart and against which you must fight with great courage and faith until you have defeated them. So here is the dragon. You can recognize this dragon by his weapons. And like you said, these weapons, such things as ambition. And we may need to stop and think about some of these words, but you have hatred, earthly power, like governments and such, lust, Vanity, selfishness, lies, idolatry, and fanaticism. We're going to come back to those. Let's look at verse 36. It says, When the dragon of your passions have been killed by your arms of light, a new world shall appear to men. A new world being the same one, but which shall seem more beautiful. For men shall then know how to take it for their good and their progress, endowing each of their works with their idea of spirituality. This is what we read over here in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 7, where it's talking about this angel, Michael, who is actually helping us to fight against this dragon. You have to remember that Michael is the protector of those who keep the law. Those who are obedient to the scripture have angelic protections. Now, you think we have a spiritual enemy. We also must have a spiritual helper. And that is Michael. He is actually in there inside of our conscience helping us to fight against these evils these passions that we heard about over there that represent this dragon but you notice down in verse 9 that the dragon is defeated and is cast out and then you hear down in verse 10 where it says now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our god and the power of his christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down this is what the third testament is talking about when it says when the dragon of your passions has been killed by your arms of light, a new world shall appear. And this new world that he's talking about is the kingdom of heaven. Now, I said I was going to come back to those passions. And the reason why is we have to jump to another book called The Separate of Hermas to get more detail about these passions. We'll come over here to the third book called Similitudes. And when we come down here to verse 44, we see these passions or these powers being described as perfiditiousness, incontinence, infidelity, pleasure, sadness, malice, lust, anger, lying, foolishness, pride, and hatred. When we look at these words, studying the definition of them, we see that they fit pretty well with what we read in verse 35. And we can almost make a direct comparison line by line, comparing each of these powers or traits of the dragon with the scripture that we're seeing here. So in light of the third testament of the Bible, it's clear what that Revelation 12 sign in the sky is. The woman, of course, represents our mother who will give birth to this new nation who will be immediately confronted by this dragon. 
that must be defeated with the help of Michael and after which we can all go into the kingdom of heaven. Thanks to the Third Testament of the Bible and the Shepherd of Hermas, we can get an understanding of all of that. And we praise our Father for his scripture that he has put here to guide us and to give us these understandings. And remember, there are links to these books in the description of this video. Now, if you got anything out of this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. But if you want to talk about Mary and or talk about anything else, just leave us a comment down in the comment section. We try to read all comments these days, giving answers to questions people ask. So feel free to express any question you have. And in the meantime, make sure you're subscribed. Check out our other videos on Rosh Hashanah and the feast days. Pray for us and Shalom.